This is Nathaniel, and um, welcome to the uh, perhaps short and but belated tutorial on stats models. Um, I've been doing a lot of thought on stats models and what was useful, um, and there's also some shifts in, in recent years, perhaps not as recent as I've been around, but in recent years towards, uh, you know, a less statistical backed approach towards things, um, at least in the data science community. and. Um, I'm not going to go into a large detail on this. I am going to include a paper that I think is, is sort of very telling. It's by the you know, creator of Random Forests. Um, so definitely do read that if, if you sort of want to check out, um, uh, you know, my, my, some, some thoughts on this issue. Uh, that being said, I had planned to do a lot more uh, with stats models. You know, uh, a couple of years ago, I was very into stats models. Um, these days, though, I use basically one package. Um, and that's the package that I did uh, in intro to. Um, so, uh, sorry for the short tutorial. <laughs> um, Stats Models is an awesome package. If you, if you are interested in, in learning more, I really recommend that you do. Uh, and I recommend that you uh, basically make content and material for it. Um, so, with no further ado, I'll just leave you to it. You know, here is my you know, very short tutorial on Stats Models by doing uh, a little bit of fun with uh, stats models stuff. So, as we talked about during the intro, you know this is for your statistician. You're trying to use linear models, statistical models, generally speaking, not in the machine learning sense, but in the statistical sense, in order to do prediction uh, and estimation inference. Uh, so let's get started. Um, we'll go ahead and import it. Uh, you generally import the API like this, uh, statsmodels.api, and we call it statsmodels.sn. And we'll get some fun data uh, to work with. Uh, we're going to get this specter data set. That doesn't really matter. We're not going to be going into it too much. I just want to show you some of the functionality here. Okay. So here's what it looks like. Uh, we've got a GPA and then some, I think some like intelligence type scores. You want to tell whether these things are, are correlated or something like that. Um, so let me go ahead and show you the, the basic usage of stats models. So uh, we're going to do stats models, SN. Uh, OLS, ordinary least squares, uh, and that dot from formula. Uh, the classic way to do this is uh, sm.ols and then give it the um, uh, the y's, the targets, and then the factors afterwards. That's sort of like the classic way. Um, that being said, I like this way a lot better. Uh, the from formula allows us to use Patsy, and if you don't know what Patsy is, then you should definitely check it out. And if you're familiar with R, you should definitely be familiar with these formula. Um, but it will allow you to say like, I'll have my grade, my GP, uh, so my grade is a, is a function of my GPA uh, plus the, the TUS, which is, which is some score. Um, we provide the data and we get our model. Uh, you know, there's some things that we can check out on our model right now. We can check out uh, the model itself, uh, so the degrees of freedom. Uh, we can check out the degrees of freedom of the residuals, so sort of like how many data points that we're gonna have, uh, how many, uh, uh, degrees of freedom does the model have? How many parameters are we training? Uh, the endogenous names. So this is like our Y, our target variable, and the exogenous names. So this is always a good sanity check. Um, the next function that's super crucial here, there's there's only three, so it's pretty easy to remember, is the fit. Um, so fit will return you a result object. This will get all of the results uh, from, from fitting this regression. So this is simple, ordinary least squares. So line of best fit. So we're just doing linear regression, vanilla. Um, and then finally, we've got res.summary. This will print out all of the good stuff. Um, and so a lot of people see this and they're scared. This looks really scary. There's lots of words here. It's, it's a little bit intimidating, but I'll go ahead and walk you through almost all of it. Um, whew, okay, so we've, we've got the model. It's ordinary least squares. Uh, the method, we're just using least squares. Again, um, there's lots of types of methods that you could use. So this could be like gradient descent or, um, or something else, right? In, in order, like maximum likelihood is, is another thing. These, these are the, the fitting methods, how we train um, a date, so you guys know. Uh, number of observations. So this is um, number of data points that you have. Uh, degrees of freedom of the residuals, right? Degrees of freedom of the model, this is number of the parameters. Covariance type, if you're doing ordinary least squares, it's always gonna be non-robust. All this stuff is kind of interesting, but you should you should know a lot of this already. You should know the number of parameters and you should know the number of observations. Um, the stuff on the right-hand column is the sort of juicier stuff. So, so we get R squared. So uh, if you guys don't know this, I'll, I'll link it in the, in the, uh, 
in the video below. Uh, but R squared is trying to measure the amount of variance that's captured by our model. So the amount of variance that's explained by our model. So we, we explain 26% of the variance. Um, adjusted R squared, when, if you're comparing models, this is a much better way to compare them. Okay, so adjusted R squared is going to be 0.2. It doesn't really have like a, a percentage form to it, but the more parameters you get, the, the lower this adjusted R squared will be if these parameters aren't informative. Um, the F statistic, literally ignore this. <laughs> it's a thing that you want to look at here is the probability of the F statistic. Uh, so it's pretty low. Uh, what this is saying, this F statistic here is basically saying it's an A number, basically saying that all of my coefficients are zero. What's the probability that that would happen? It's below you know, 0.05, it's really quite low. Um, log likelihood, AIC and BIC, these are only used to compare models. Um, really, I would just use the AIC. Uh, it's got information theoretic background, um, and I think it's a little bit more robust than the other ones. Um, so if you want to compare two linear regression models, you can check out the AICs. Uh, you know, so it's a, it's a good way to do it. Um, so that's the top part. Covered that, okay? We're not scared. Um, we're on to the middle part. The middle part, I think, is the most informative. Uh, we get to see all of our, um, uh, we, we get to see uh, all of our um, factors here. So the GPA, the two, so we also get to see the intercept. We get to see what these turn out to be, the coefficient that, that they're assigned. We get to see the standard error around them. It's, it's sort of more interesting in my mind to look at the confidence interval here. So we notice this the intercept's always around negative sum. The GPA always has an intercept of around 0.1. And then the twos has an intercept that's kind of all over, okay? The next thing that you can check out is this T here. Uh, so they do a T test on it. This is the T statistic, ignore this. Uh, you, you just wanna look at the P, the probability of the T statistic. I don't even know why they include this. Um, so you're looking for again P values that are really low, uh, depending on how many tests you're gonna be doing in a row. Uh, you'll, you'll change that, but in this case, um, you know, we're looking at 0 0.01, 0 0.01, these, these are obviously significant. Uh, and then we, of course, have the TUS, which is 0.45. This is not significant. You're looking for lower p-values, okay? So that's the middle part. Each coefficient is going to have these types of things. They're going to have a coefficient, they're going to have a p-value, they're going to have a confidence interval. Um, these are all interesting to know. They can tell you that the GPA, for every one point of GPA you've got, you've got around 0.1 point of... Um, grade, whatever these things are, just sort of showing you the usage. And then finally down here, see all of this stuff, Whew, man. Um, again, if you don't see a prob, you're probably not going to use it. Um, so the omnibus, ignore this, the prob omnibus is the thing you want to look at. Um, what this is going to say is the probability that this is normal or this isn't normal. Uh, you want to you want to basically look for small probabilities. If the probability is quite large, you might be thinking that you're uh, you, your data set is, is not normal, uh, which you shouldn't be using a, a linear regression. That being said, even if this is quite low, there are cases where you shouldn't be using linear regression, uh, at least not to make inference. Um, so skew and kurtosis are right here, and, you, and you'll notice the skew should be around zero. That would tell us that we have a normal distribution. The skew's a little bit higher, a little bit right skewed. And the kurtosis should be around three. It's a little bit less than that. Um, so. So we're not dealing with a normal distribution. We might not want to be using linear regression to fit, or we might want to make some transformations, use robust linear regression. Uh, Durbin-Watson is only for time series stuff, so ignore. Uh, Jacques Baer, uh, here, this is again very, very similar to the omnibus test. Uh, this will basically tell you whether your data is distributed normally. Um, again, it's a little bit high, and that's as we expect. And then the conditional number. Uh, this is also pretty important. Uh, this is, a, Okay, there's no prop around it, but you should definitely check this out. The conditional number, if it's above 30, is going to be telling you that your columns are collinear. That, that some of the, so in this case, GPA and TUS, they're, they're very correlated. Uh, so in that case, you might want to be using some sort of regularization, which we'll get to. And that's it. So this is, this is the whole model. This is sort of the big, uh, the big shebang here. I'll show you just a little bit more, um, just to sort of show you the full package of stuff that you can do with ordinary least squares. And then we'll move on and sort of show you some more things uh, that you can build on top. Um, you can check out the log likelihood uh, of a particular um, uh, set of parameters. Not useful. Uh, never use that. You can definitely predict this is very useful, especially when trying to score your model. So you give it 
the parameters, you go ahead and you give it what it needs to uh, predict. So you've got a, a you know the one which is your intercept, a four which is your GPA, and a twenty five which is your something your twos. It's really good. Um, you've got F tests as well. So in case you aren't satisfied with just knowing what the total F test is, um, you can figure out what the F test for subsets of your variables are. So in this case, you know if it's GPA equals zero, this is um, 0.0 or 1.5, and, and you'll notice that that's the exact probability up here. It's, it's fairly close. Um, now, if you do multiple things, the GPA and two equals zero, this is saying that it's just just based on the intercept term. You know, this is also a very low p-score. So you can you can try to do test and see which of these variables are important in, in combination. Um, okay, and now I'm going to be showing you the final thing here, which is comparing models. It allows us to do that a little bit more. So we go ahead, we add the GPA, the twos, and the PSI to the spectator data. Go ahead and fit, we get a new model, we, we get some new stuff here. It uh, looks like the PSI is super important, right? We've got this 0.01 um, on the confidence interval, and just keep that in mind. Now there's a couple of tests that you can do, okay? So you can do uh, the F test, or you can do the uh, log, uh, log likelihood ratio test. Um, and this LN test, I I've never used this before. But the idea here is basically to um, it's to figure out which of these models is, is a better. It, it better accounts for the data. And one of the things it also does is it penalizes you for having a very complex model. So I go ahead and I'll compare this model to the original model, res. So that was only with two parameters. And we notice the probability that res is going to be better than this res1 is very, very small, right? This, this model, res1, is, is a much better model. And, and you'll notice the r squared is bigger, the adjusted r squared is bigger. I think everything is better from this model, except for maybe the, yep, everything is better. So um, so you'll also see this with, with these two below here down. So again, very, very low scores. Final thing that I wanted to show you is you can save and load these models. Um, very simple, uh, res.save. Uh, you save it in a pickle file, it's a little bit big, and you can load it. And this model, this result or whatever, this is as, as, as big as the original model was. You don't need to do anything. You just load this and we'll get all the, all the extra information. They're all stored in config. Um, okay. The last thing, uh, you can also fit regularized. Um, I'll just tell you about these parameters here. So the alpha, these are the weights uh, that you might want to assign specific points. Um, the L1 weight, uh, so when you go ahead and you fit regularized, you're assuming that you have an L1 and L2. Um, these are the weights that you apply. So I've got a, a full L1 to this guy, a full L1 to this guy, a full L1 to this guy, and a full L1 to this guy. So, so just L1 times a lambda of 1 for each of these people, and my L1 is going to be 1. Um, now when I reduce the L1, it goes to L2 penalty. Uh, so this can be either between 1 and 0. So if it's 0, it's going to be L2. If it's uh, it's going to be all L2, and if it's if it's 1, it's going to be this guy. So if it's 1, it's going to be lasso, and if it's 0, it's going to be ridge regression. Otherwise, it's going to be elastic net. So these are the ways to fit your regularized stuff. Um, the final parameter here is, of course, refit, which is pretty cool. Um, not as cool as scikit-learn. I think it's much better for doing things that aren't statistical inference. Remember, this is just really good for statistical inference. Uh, the idea here is that you'll refit the model. Uh, on all parameters that didn't turn out to be zero. So if you're using L1, it will generally drop your parameters to zero. Uh, as, well, I guess not parameters here, but factors to zero. Um, so that's that's about it. So this is sort of the basics of stats models, especially with the ordinary least squares. We'll probably rush through the generalized least squares. Uh, there's not too much more to cover. They're, they're pretty compact in here. There's probably only going to be a few more lessons of these. But again, just this basic idea here, this OLS star from formula to specify an exact formula that you want. You can convert these to categorical if you want. Um, uh, GPA, you can convert them to categorical. You can make them a cyclic sp uh, spline, uh, which I think is CR. You you'll need to check that. It's, it's again on, on Patsy stuff. You, you can sort of do tons of stuff with this, and it's very fun. Um, the second thing that's really useful here, uh, which you should remember, is of course, the uh, results. Uh, I think this is the majority of the stuff that I use it for. Um, I've used it once or twice to use the predict and everything else I've really not used it for, but the features are there. Um, okay, 
I hope this was useful. Uh, definitely tune in later. We're going to be doing lots more of these. Um, and then we're going to be moving on to really cool stuff like scikit-learn, Keras deep learning. Um, okay. Thanks, guys. And this is Nathaniel, and over and out.